I think what different people um, consider to be important in terms of how genetics will be used are obviously going to take on um, different priorities for different, for different people. Understanding the underpinnings of addiction, for example, in uh, cigarette smoking and understanding um, what levels of nicotine may be more or less addictive in people I think is an important question. From a public health standpoint, understanding what drives people to smoke or not smoke I think are very important considerations and genetics may be a very powerful tool to begin to give us some clues. Now if people are using that to say, well gee I have the genes that allow me to smoke as much as I want and not get lung cancer, that is a different issue and I think these are the kinds of things that we'll have to start to grapple with because again all of this is uncertain and because there is an environmental component we can't be sure of any of the predictions that we're making based on genetic sequence. Uh, I do try to read them on medications, prescription medications, although uh, the commissioner commented recently at a, at a speech, uh, and, and I agree with her, they are quite dense and challenging to get through sometimes. So we are working uh, on something called plain language and trying to come up with ways to educate patients and consumers about what is very complex information in a, in a language that would be more readily understandable. Uh, no, I don't think it was a shock, but you know, uh, this is another example of where uh, products are manufactured to enhance different elements of, in this case, drinking behaviors, and um, I think the decision was, was the right one and a good one to, to make to go after those products.